Hi there, my name is Rashi. I believe we all have had an incredible journey in life. Here on this podcast, I will be sharing the lessons I have learned along the way and will also have guests from all walks of life to have open and honest conversations with on issues and topics that affect us in our everyday life. I hope you will be part of this beautiful tribe. So let's begin. Hey guys, you are listening to Let's Be Rational with me, Rashi. And today we have Brie with us. Um, hi Brie, it's so good to see you again. Hi. It's so good to see you too and to be here again. <laughs> um, Brie um, is a law of attraction mindset coach. And we also did a podcast um, earlier this year. Um, and we talked about manifesting our dream goals. And we talked a lot about intention setting and about journaling. And if you yeah. want to check out that podcast, I link that down in the description. Um, but for the sake of this um, podcast, um, I just want to talk to Brie about everything that she's currently doing, her current projects, because she is always doing some amazing work and it's always Aww. good to be, you Thank know, you. and yeah, it's really nice because I think you sort of inspired me in a way as well to, um, keep, uh, making little progress, um, towards the ultimate vision that I have for myself and I see your posts and I feel motivated and energized and I'm like, Yay. Okay. <laughs> which is amazing. Um, yeah. So what's happening, Brie? Let's just start off by just, okay. what's happening? What, yeah. what, what is your, what are your new current projects that you're working on? Yeah. So let's get to, to the good stuff. So I have a private Facebook group called Thrive From Within Sisterhood. And I decided to create this Facebook group just because I wanted other like-minded and ambitious women to have a platform, to connect, to be able to vent whenever they're having a bad day, and also to just get any type of resources that will benefit them with their own journey. So I want to say I started my Facebook group in the beginning of this year, um, and as I continue to like post on it, and as new members continue to join. I'm just like, okay, like what else can I do? What else can I offer my, my audience? Um, so I started thinking and I started kind of thinking back to my own self growth journey. And it's like when I was learning different types of techniques and methods, it was, it was cool and it was exciting because I'm just like, all right, I'm learning how to really look within and kind of like expand my mindset. But I didn't really have any guidance. It was really just like, it was all left on my own. If um, I connected with different types of coaches or mentors, I would have that conversation with them, but I didn't, there wasn't like a platform I could go to, to ask those questions or to find those resources. So that's when I decided to create the Evolve Workshop, which I had the second one this past Monday. And pretty much the, the purpose of the Evolve Workshop is to provide not only my audience, but whoever else wants to join my private Facebook group, the tools they need for their self-growth journey so they can meet their goals. And it's pretty much just literally walking through step-by-step step what are the methods and techniques that I'm using to either heal manifest or to look within. So this past Monday, we burned bay leaves to let go and release the fears or the limiting beliefs that we're having and to welcome what we do desire. So it's like really casual, really chill. And since we are walking it, since I'm walking them through it, it's pretty much, it gives them the opportunity to set aside that time to not only listen to what I'm saying, but also to for them to learn how to use these techniques and methods correctly. So yeah, that, that is pretty much what the Evolve workshop is. It's my little baby and I, I love it. I'm really, really excited to continue you know, presenting these workshops. Um, at the moment, I'm only hosting them twice a month. 
Okay. So, yeah. Um, that's amazing. I think the whole intent behind this workshop um, about um, having a mentor or just seeking guidance among like-minded people and having that community yeah. that you can fall back on um, is amazing because I do face that issue um, because, you know, you have um, so many ideas sometimes and you always have them at the back of your mind, but sometimes you just don't have that um, courage or maybe the resources or the correct, um, you know, that push, that extra push or nudge that you need to follow. Yeah, through. exactly. And yeah, it's sometimes mm -hmm. when you just lay it out there, put it out in front of um, other people and there will be, you know, someone who would make you, someone will say the right thing that you need to hear and you know just um do what you have to do in order to uh accomplish a goal or whatever it is that you are trying to do so i really like that idea and i yeah, do thank you yeah and, and i also feel like it, it kind of like takes away the stress of you yeah. kind of googling and because i feel like once you google one thing it's like an endless search like you just keep finding different articles and then you're just kind of like overwhelmed and you're just like you know what forget this I don't want to do it anymore like it's just too complicating so at least because it's also alive so you can ask any questions in that moment to get any more like clarity on on a certain step that I'm demonstrating um so yeah it just kind of saves you the stress because it's like you have one place to go to where you know you can ask any questions that you want to and you actually understand like how to practice and apply it into your own like intentional tasks that you're working on. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I just wanted to ask you, did you ever had any personal mentors or coach at any point in your career or, you know, in your life where you sought guidance or it could be like just an informal mentor, like, uh, you know, in the form of a friend or your parent or some relative that you really found valuable, like their inputs? Yeah, definitely. I um, I would say I've always viewed my grandma as like a super wise person. And, and I don't know, just everything she, she says to me, like she's that kind of motivating person to me. Like, you know, when you were mentioning about like these lives can like they motivate you and they just kind of help you have that clarity to go after your goal. Well, she is like the person that provides me with that motivation and that like drive to like keep going. So I even spoke to her yesterday because I wasn't having like the greatest day. I was just like, oh, I'm tired. And I spoke to her and she's just like, it's okay. You know, keep going. Like there's good days. There's not really bad days, but just like low days where you don't feel like a hundred percent your best. And um, yeah, talking to her, it just, it like literally recharges me. I have even a little picture of her on my desk. It's my oh, grandma. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, Thank you. This is like when she was um younger, but yeah, even just like looking at her picture, I'm just like, okay, we got this. Like, what are we going to do today that is going to allow me to serve other people? So um, yeah, I would say like family wise, she is almost like my my mentor, but I guess more professionally, I have had coaches and mentors that I've spoken to even in the moment I'm a part of uh, a women circle group where the goal is to pretty much empower one another share our stories and through that knowing that you're not alone in your journey so even though I am a coach myself I still need that that guidance and, and that support and I feel like it's completely healthy to have that even though I am the the professional or the expert like you might want to, to say or think, you know, we still need a place to, to vent and to kind of process our own thoughts because we're human after all. So, um, yeah. And actually I'm, I'm going to be starting this like lifetime program with, with a coach that I've been in contact with to have my own resources and materials that I can always access as a coach. So yeah, I feel like it's super important to have that, that support no matter if it's from a family, from like a professional. So, yeah. That's amazing. I can't wait to, um, you know, be part of this 
evolve workshop and probably you know yes. get some help myself i feel like um even experts like you even though you have an expertise in a particular field you still need some expert guidance at some point and which is which is um which is a fact and which is incredible um yeah like i feel like this year for me has also been um like i've learned about myself that even though most of the times i think that you know i got this i can do this it's fine i don't yeah. need help like you know i i can even if i make a mistake um i have ideas i can you know experiment and i can make this work but i feel like that's all good and it's good to um believe in yourself and believe that you can do everything but i think you still need maybe you know some sort of um mentorship and some sort of guidance um even if it's you know it doesn't really have to be like a um very formal um you know like a coaching service or like a mentorship service but it could just be like a community like yours um yeah you can share ideas you can ask for feedback or you can put your idea out there and you will get some feedback it will make you learn more about um you know what you are trying to do so i think it's a great idea i think everybody needs help and it's okay to seek help and it's okay to seek mentorship because that will really maybe fast forward the pace of your uh, project or the things that you're trying to accomplish so yeah yeah definitely and and also it kind of it lets you know that you're not alone in your struggle because you know we all have a past we all have history that we've experienced some type of like trauma whether it's when i say the word trauma it doesn't have to be something really really uh how can i say this like in impactful or, or something um super negative i guess because when you think of the word trauma you think of it being like negative, negative. but even just being ignored as a child by your parents that can kind of create some some trauma for you so it's like we all have experienced something some type of hardship some type of trauma some type of event that has really like shifted our mindset and has changed our level of confidence and self esteem and, and creates these limiting beliefs and these inner obstacles that we don't really identify or notice right so to be able to have a, a place like a facebook group just to be able to share what your struggle is and know that you're not alone because we all can relate like to to some extent we can all kind of relate to each other because we do experience somewhat similar things like not not to say that it's the exact same experience but we are still left with like that similar feeling of not feeling confident or feeling doubtful so um yeah yeah not only to just like vent but just to know that you're not alone i feel like goes a long way and it kind of recharges you to continue working on your goals cuz it's like okay i know i have people like backing me up i know i have people who want the best for me because sometimes we can maybe share something to our friends or to our coworkers or our family and we don't get that support that we actually want and need they kind of might dismiss it or they might just say like you know what are you doing so to be in a in a place where everybody is like rooting for each other i feel like that it it really does shift your your mindset towards like a more positive mindset yeah i love that yeah exactly um also it keeps you accountable i feel like accountability is such a my window really quick yeah <laughs> all good um yeah i was saying like accountability is also such a major factor that plays into this um i think i was telling you how i um have a friend who i'm getting on a program with um to accomplish my fitness goals this year because i think in at the start of the year i was like i'm going to be fine i know how to work out i'm a gym goer yeah. i have been going to the gym for like years and so what covid happens or has happened like i'm just going to do home workouts i'll be fine and i had no idea that i would gain weight and become so inactive <laughs> eventually yeah and, yeah and just be like not have that sort of motivation that i can literally exercise even five times a week like got to that point you know starting from or you know from from the times when i going to the gym was like 
was a thing. Like I would go five times a week. It was normal. It was okay to just not being able to exercise even a day or two, like in a week was like um, quite a major change for me. And I think that's where I think for me this year, mentorship also sort of, I learned that sometimes you need someone or a community or anyone that will help you keep you accountable for what you're trying yeah. to do. And that has helped me so much since I've, you know, joined a program. I'm like we are sending pictures of our food. We're sending um, workout pictures. Like, okay, I did this. And, you know, it's just, it's just a nice feeling. You feel like there is someone who is on the same plan with you and is trying to achieve those goals and you're doing it together. It's, it's just a good feeling. So. Yeah, definitely. And it helps you keep like stay motivated because like you said, you know, you had your, your routine of going to the gym, but sometimes even making it to the gym, I feel yeah. like is a struggle for some people, like finding that motivation to actually leave their house to go work out. So it's like, you know, with being in your home because of COVID and quarantine, it's like, okay, now I don't have to leave my home to work out, but now I need to find that motivation to actually put on my gym clothes to start, you know, doing some jumping jacks or doing something that, you know, really requires you to move your body um, with like a high impact, depending on like what exactly your workout looks like. But still, it's kind of like you... Our, our minds, we can readjust to new situations really quickly without even realizing. So I'm sure it's so easy to stay comfortable in your pajamas, on the couch, you know, on your laptop or watching something on TV rather than being like, okay, let me find this energy to go put on my gym clothes and work out. So um, definitely having, and even at this moment, I'm doing like a 21 day hit challenge and it is super intense, Ooh, but love it. like, like same with like what you were saying, you know, we, we take pictures, like we have to, um, a part of like the challenge rules is that like we take a picture, we put it on our social media. Um, but we also take a picture within the group to say like, okay, we did it. So it's like, everybody is showing pictures of like their sweat, just like drenched <laughs> in sweat. Some people are posting the actual video yeah i'm working out but it's also a place to say hey i'm like in a low state of energy or well of vibration and you know i'm going to work out because you know you're a part of the challenge but you can also vent that it's like you might be overwhelmed or you're just not mm. feeling as energized and know that other people are like you know what it's okay either i feel the same way or if they don't they're just like you know we're still going to kill it today so you still get that you know reinforcement and, yeah. and that motivation too, because it's like you know you're a part of something and you entered this challenge because it's going to help you meet some type of goal it's important to you so just just being a part of the group itself is what I feel like holds you accountable too because you want to keep doing it even on those days that you feel a little shitty you know so I definitely um yeah I feel like groups are are super important to hold you accountable and to connect with other people too yeah I love that idea um that's amazing Brie um I I did see a picture of you um I think on Instagram where you posted and you were like drenched in sweat and I was like I love that (laughs) Um, yeah I did it uh I posted it uh yesterday it was yeah yeah that's amazing um what do you have to say to people who think that um because sometimes people do not have that community or feel that they cannot find that community or sometimes someone actually needs a coach or a mentor who Mm. would really drive home the things that they need to do in order to accomplish the goals that they have set for themselves. And that might entail like like a detailed plan and that would involve, you know, some cost or some transaction or you know that they have to pay for the services um but it is for their eventual um goal like if they really want to you know how much they actually um dream for that goal or how much they want to accomplish that like it also depends on that but how would you convince those people i'm one of them i'm very skeptical about putting my money in yeah definitely i hear that because I feel like 
oh, I can do it. I can figure it out. Maybe it will take me another couple of months or maybe years, but I know that's not a good strategy. Um, how to make someone understand that it's okay to invest money in your goals because eventually it's you're investing it in yourself in a way yeah i feel like well first i want to say like i feel like i understand why there's this like resistance to want to pay for services because you know we're never taught to put our well-being and our mental health first like you know we're taught to to be active to be healthy but when it comes to like expressing yourself or really understanding what's going on with yourself you know we're not really taught to do that because it's almost like a taboo subject like i remember in school growing up it's like if you're sent to the guidance counselor or to to the school therapist or psychologist it's kind of like ooh, what's wrong with them like they have <laughs> issues so it's just like you know this negative um like stereotype that has been created around your well-being and your mental health but it's like if you don't learn how to check in with yourself what are the emotions and thoughts that you're having through either therapy or coaching or just speaking to some type of professional it's like how are you supposed to get through this hurdle that you're having right now because you know we might not see it but we feel it and we feel it in the sense is like that we feel stagnant it's like we're almost in this like invisible box where we see everyone around us kind of like moving forward in life and doing things and you know being happy or successful or whatever the case it is or however we're viewing these people that we know but meanwhile we're just kind of there in our little invisible box looking around like yeah i'm still in the same place and you might not mm. like you might be moving forward in your career you may be you know making the money that you desire but it's like emotionally you're you're stuck mm. and that can look like maybe you know you start something and you're not able to achieve it or maybe you're connecting with like the wrong type of relationships or you find yourself still falling in that pattern of like negative relationships and just not finding the right person for you so it's like it can look like in so many ways even friendships you know hanging out with people that don't really serve you or understand you or are aligned to ultimately who you want to be like it's so easy to kind of get lost in the current to like allow ourselves to get taken by society or friends culture and we don't really have the opportunity to be like okay wait what's going on let me check in with myself like do i like what's happening do i like the people that i'm surrounding myself with like we don't we're not taught to do that we're always taught to you know keep hustling keep moving forward keep making more money you know to be a successful person that society has you know like society's created this idea of what is successful but when i think of success it's not only having that financial success but it's also being okay with your your well-being and your mental health that also shows that you're successful because you're not allowing you know external factors to to identify you you're able to identify yourself from knowing who exactly you are and what you stand for and what you want so um yeah i i, I would say that it it's changing your viewpoint about seeking help and it's not even seeking help it's more like improving yourself because by learning more about yourself by looking within and really understanding why you make the decisions that you've made in the past and why they didn't serve you or benefit you you can then make more conscious decisions that will make you live a more authentic life and when you're living authentically you no matter what happens you feel happy with yourself because you know you're taking actions that are, are what exactly you want they're not being influenced by others so yeah that was my little rant no that was amazing like you i really liked the idea that you emphasized on the fact that you know how our mental uh, and physical well-being is not put first uh, maybe physical more much more than yeah. mental uh, well-being and it's okay to invest um, um, time, resources in that, in that area. Um, 
I'll just give you an example. Like I have been trying to have a website of my own and I have been trying that since last year. And every time I get down every couple of months, I'll sit down, I'll try those free websites. And after like doing my research and trying to fiddle around um, yeah. on the website after two or three hours, I'm just like, okay, I can't figure this out. I, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm going to try it next time. And I've been doing that for the, for the last year and a half. And I still don't have a website just because I just think that I can do this because it's, you know, it's, you know, how a lot of websites are, are designed so that you can actually create them on your own. They're already made. Yeah, it's like do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I still can't because it's it's not as easy as I thought it would be. And I've been delaying it. So I think eventually I've decided that I will have or hire someone to at least get the website going so that I can start mm-hmm. putting content over it because otherwise it would just become a thing of procrastination and then I also, f- I think I learned this amazing um, information um, the other day. And I think there was like a recent study done um, on why we procrastinate. I think a lot of theories have been made about it. Like procrastination is because, oh, you're lazy or you, um, you just do not like what sh- you have to do. That's why you just delay things and you just don't get to it. But yeah. apparently that's not the case. The real reason why people procrastinate because there is a negative emotion attached to that action. For example, yeah. I have to finish an assignment. Uh, not a real life story. It is a real life story <laughs> that I have to finish an assignment and I just wouldn't get down to finishing it until the last minute um, yeah. because I have a negative emotion that I somewhere think that I'm not going to do it or something to some negative emotion that's pushing me. So it's not because I'm lazy. Like I have, I'm yeah. free and I have the energy. I know what I have to write or probably know what, what I have to write, but it's because every time I sit down, I know that I'm not going to do it because it has now become a habit. And not just a habit, because every time I sit, I think about those times when I haven't finished an assignment and that creates that pattern of negative emotions. For example, for the website, yeah. every time I sit down, I, some, I have this in my subconscious that, that in the past, every time I have sat down to try to do this website, I haven't been able to do it because somewhere I believe that I just can't do it. And it's somewhere in your subconscious, but you just you know, that negative emotion gets attached and I keep procrastinating and I keep delaying it. Um, That was like an amazing thing that I learned. So I've decided to, yeah, get a website developer or someone and help me with it. So I really like the idea of, um, yeah, putting your mental well-being first and getting um, the right person or tools or resources required. Um, Yeah. Did you have to say something about it? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's okay. I, I really liked what you were saying about like procrastinating because it's true. It's like if you're procrastinating, it's like, oh, you're lazy or like, yeah, you're not being productive, but it, it's more more than just that. It's not that you're lazy. Like I've even heard that procrastination is a reflection of some type of like trauma that you've experienced that yeah. kind of like holds you back from actually moving forward with whatever you're working on or even it's because of like some anxiety or even when you have this belief like you're a perfectionist some people are like I'm a perfectionist and this is a great quality and to a certain extent it is but when you're a perfectionist like you're so focused on it being perfect that it will take you the whole entire day rather than it taking you like one hour and you could just like bang it out and create something like beautiful and amazing and you know that it could connect with your audience or, or whatever it is or guilty of school. that guilty of that completely yeah 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 and it's like i think um procrastination it is an example of like the limiting beliefs that we do have because even like you said when you're working on something you're just like I can't do this or we might think you know because like in regards to like school and stuff like that let's say you're working on a paper 
and you always get this C plus. And you're just like, then you start this new assignment <clears throat> with the back of your mind, you're just like, you know, I'm gonna get this C plus again. I'm not going to get the A that I really want. So it's like you kind of hold off on doing the assignment because you're just like, you know what? I'm not going to get the grade that I actually want. So it's like we just speak so poorly to ourselves. But we do that because we don't know how to show ourselves like that love. We don't know how to show ourselves that appreciation and, and also to comfort ourselves. Like, you know, growing up, we get comforted and loved by our caretakers, our parents, our families. But then I feel like we're not really taught how to continue taking care of ourselves and showing ourselves that that love and and actually telling ourselves everything will be okay everything will work out so um yeah i just really wanted to like mention that what you were saying about procrastination because it's it's so true it it um it's definitely a reflection of these negative emotions that we have yeah and it kind of also continues to to prove why we need to understand the emotions that we experience so we're not just thinking of ourselves as lazy and unproductive mm. um yeah exactly and also like um your negative emotions they sort of pile pile on like they build on like one after the other. every time you procrastinate every, every time you sort of delay um acting on something that emotion mm. adds up to your next emotion that's going to emanate out of your next um, time when you don't act on that thing. So you know what I mean? Like I probably yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah, I probably and, didn't explain procrastination better. I think I'm going to do a podcast on it because uh, I think it's a very important topic. Um, and I learned about the study. I want to learn more about it and explain it properly. But yeah, you get yeah, that. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's really interesting. And I like to think about not only procrastination, but just like our negative emotions and our limiting beliefs as like a hamper. You know, you throw in your clothes in the hamper. And because, you know, I know we're still in quarantine and like a lot of us are either taking like online classes or working online or working remotely. Um, we still find ways to avoid our emotions or to stay busy. So it's like prior to, to quarantine, you know, we're always on the go, going from work, going home, going to buy groceries, whatever the case may be, we're always moving that it's like, we just continue to throw our clothes in the hamper and we allow it to, to pile up and to eventually overflow. And then two weeks later, you're like, oh my gosh, I really need to do my laundry. But you don't really, um, like, oh my gosh, I lost my, my train of thought, but pretty much what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we pile up all these clothes in our hamper. And by the time we go to do the laundry, we're just throwing everything into the wash. You know, we're not separating it. We're not like maybe spraying it like we need to. <laughs> we're just kind of like throwing it in there because who really likes to do the laundry? Not many people. So it's like the same thing applies to our emotions. You know, who really wants to look within and understand themselves when you don't know what you're going to find? So, <clears throat> but when you allow your laundry to pile up, you're just causing more work for yourself. So it's like the same thing as you allow these emotions to continue piling up, you just experience more of that like negativity or even or anxiety, you just feel more of like that weight on your shoulders. So even if you can't identify what's the exact emotion that you feel, like your body will physically show you whether it's like you always have this like pressure in your chest or in your stomach, or you just feel heavy. And it's like, you carry that with you every day. And it's like, to the point that you just don't feel happy. You don't feel satisfied with life. And that you can like identify a little bit. But besides that, yeah, I, I, I <laughs> lost my train of thought again, but I was I just thought, like, yeah, I'm just going. I, but, I, I um, got the drift, so it's good. Also, I feel like all your examples are so relatable in a way mm, to me because I'm thank like, you. how did you know about my laundry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's um, true. It's true. Um, yeah, amazing. Um, Pre, I am so happy that we did this today. Um, some amazing pieces of gem is was there anything else that you wanted to talk about or wanted to share um, with my audience and probably your audience is listening yes i i would just say like in regards to 
these negative emotions and beliefs that we have it's like to to also remember about it it's like when you have that initial thought because of some type of experience so the initial thought is like i'm not enough right because maybe you didn't get chosen for something or you know you you were just in a situation that you you felt rejected or you feel like you failed so then the initial thought of not being enough pops up and then it's like once you have that initial thought whether it be not being enough whether it be any type of negative or limiting belief it then turns into the the belief because you continue to think about it you continue to say to yourself i'm not enough and as you move into new activities and new yeah just new stuff trying new things you continue to think of this thought of not being enough because of that initial experience that created the thought and then that turns into like an act so then your actions is you holding yourself back you no longer signing up for like new activities or you no longer looking into something that you want to do that interests you because you think you're not enough enough and ultimately that result that outcome is you feeling unsatisfied with yourself so it's kind of like a chain reaction it's almost like a domino effect of how our negative emotions and limiting beliefs yeah like where they take us through so i just feel like it's super important to as scary as intimidating as it may be looking within there are so many people that we can connect with you know not whether it's me you know whether it's you whether it's any type of person that has the aim of helping others it's all about you know trying to find those people find the most suitable person that you feel most comfortable connecting with so you can break that domino effect that ultimately you've created for yourself because the the struggles the obstacles that we have they're created by external factors but we are the ones that ultimately continue to have that that belief and and to continue to encourage these negative emotions so it all comes back down to us so it's like really taking um just responsibility for yourself to live the life that you want yeah. So that's my my closing message. Amazing. I loved it. Um, this could actually become a clip <laughs> about negative yeah, yeah. and how to handle them. And I will definitely put it out, um, you know, apart from this podcast as well. Um, before we go, I have an impromptu quick, maybe five questions. Let's be honest series. I just invented yeah. it. Okay. Are you, are you ready for this? Let's be honest. Impromptu. Question. Yes, I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Um, what's your biggest limiting belief about you? Okay. Um, I would say, I don't know if I could give like background. Can I give some background yeah. information to it? Okay, cool. So, um, I feel like for for a majority of my life, I always had this belief that I wasn't enough. And and I feel like from looking within and understanding myself, I was able to identify that this belief really stemmed from when I was younger. Because when I was younger, I was a little, I was a little thicker, you know? And once like preteen and and puberty hit, I lost like lots of weight. And, and then people like family, they started bringing it to my attention and it started to make me feel uncomfortable because I didn't physically like notice the change, you know? So it's like to kind of almost, I felt like attacked by my family. Like they're like, are you okay? What's going on? And I'm just like, what do you mean what's going on? Like, I'm still eating. It's not like I'm harming myself. Like, so they were just placing all this attention onto my, my body that, at any young age or especially when you're an adolescent and things are changing and you know you're just confused about what's going on with your body you don't want this extra attention on you so then it's like i started feeling like i wasn't enough because they were just putting so much attention on my body and the changes that were going on and i feel like that feeling of not being enough ultimately led me into unhealthy relationships because i was just kind of um wanting to be and and I wanted to be with someone who wanted to be with me rather than like me wanting to be with someone because 
I genuinely like them. And of course, people in my past, I mean, I did have feelings towards them, but I feel like it was more like me taking that chance or, or me being with them. Cause it's like, Oh, somebody, somebody likes me for all of this for me, yeah. you know? So I must be enough for this person. So yeah, it was just a limiting belief because I'm enough regardless, you know, regardless of, of how I look rather than getting that justification mm. from those relationships. So, um, yeah, so I feel like the, the belief, the limiting belief I've had is not being enough and, and I continue to, to work through it, but it no longer, um, like I no longer believe it, mm. you know, like I, like even if it does pop through my mind when I'm doing something new, especially I remind myself of everything that I've done so far where I've had to step outside my comfort zone, where I've had to face fears and face this belief and how I've done it and I can continue to, to do it. So yeah. yeah, that's a little, no, my story of my beliefs. Amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. yeah, I totally get it. Like I've been through that stage and yeah, it's, yeah, it's not a good feeling, but I'm glad that you sort of have worked through, um, that feeling and you're thriving and yeah, it's so good yeah. to see you like this. Um, yes. okay. So next question is what is that one thing that you procrastinate the most about currently? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I think at the moment I have, um, I have a, a Patreon account. So on my Patreon account, it, it's pretty much like different um, materials, like additional materials, like workbooks, worksheets, webinars that I post. And every single month, it's a new workbook, new worksheet, and new webinar. So I feel like I'm procrastinating a little bit creating this new webinar because I'm not really sure what exactly I want to talk about. I feel like there's so many topics that I can talk about, so many topics that I talk about on my YouTube channel, my Instagram page, that to narrow down on something that I could create an actual webinar on, I feel like I am procrastinating a little bit because I'm just like, mm, I'm not really sure. I don't have that clarity yet. So yeah yeah um okay so next one is um i forgot the question um okay it was just in my mind okay let me think. i hate when that happens okay yeah, yeah i got it i got it um okay what is that one word um that you have been using a lot these days and you have to be honest it could be a swear word but i want to know what is yeah. that one word that you use a lot a lot, lot. Hmm. Or a phrase or a word, you know, could be a phrase. Hmm. I'm trying to think, what have I been using a lot? Um, I feel like honestly, like the past day and a half, I, I'm, I'm going to, this is a phrase that I've been using because I don't know, it's just starting. It's not even how I speak, <laughs> but it's like, I guess my significant other is, is English. So um, his curse words are a little bit different than, than mine as American. So I've noticed myself saying for fuck's sake, and I'm just like, this is not something that any American would say. And even when I say it sometimes, I'm just like, it sounds so weird <laughs> because I don't have the British accent. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but for some reason I just find myself saying it more frequently. So I feel like this is like my new my new phrase to, to express a difficult or annoying situation. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, that, that's it. Mine is shit. <laughs> Anything shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Um, okay. So the next question is, uh, what sort of evokes a greater vulnerability in you um it could be a person it could be a scenario it could be memory you know something that really sort of makes you vulnerable mm. um, it could be vulnerability in a bad way and it could be vulnerable in a good way in good way i mean like you feel the emotions you feel you know, you're letting it out and you can be vulnerable to a person or it could be vulnerability in a, I don't know if it's a bad way, but it's like, you do not want to 
like you want to be as far away from that situation or that person or whatever it is or you don't have to name the person but i'm saying like if it's a good one you can say that it's a partner or whatever like what's yeah what's that one okay. person or situation that um, well i always like fun. to think of vulnerability as a strain because i feel mm-hmm. like once again we're taught not to like open ourselves up we're taught to kind of have this like guard especially when you're from new york you know what i mean there's like all this aggression and like that that is how you're you're supposed to almost like display yourself as like this tough person that it's like nothing can phase you nothing can affect you um so i feel like vulnerability is a strength because since we are taught to keep all our feelings and thoughts within um to be able to open up to someone i feel like is is courageous because it's hard to to share feelings with someone so i feel like i can be just i want to say through like the lives that i host my my flourish and grow lives that i post on my instagram page i feel like that allows me that's like a platform that allows me to be vulnerable because at first um i was super nervous super nervous to go live to just talk to people that i couldn't actually see you know what i mean like you just see their names pop up but you can't actually see their face so it can be a little nerve-wracking to feel like that you're just talking to like the great beyond but well what did i say frustrating no it could be like scary to yeah. to talk to like this great beyond that you don't really know who is there um and and i feel like as i continue to host these lives it's helped me share more about my life experiences any type of limiting beliefs or struggles or inner obstacles that i faced um because it's another like chill platform where you can pretty much jump on learn about a new topic in addition to just hearing about my story sharing your story if you want you know people have the opportunity to comment so um yeah it's helped me just feel more comfortable sharing my story and expressing these feelings without feeling guilty or feeling like i'm going to be judged or feeling ashamed of anything so um yeah i feel like that this platform has like allowed me to open up more amazing okay last question um how okay. would you how would you describe your current mood in life Ooh, i would say a lot more um peaceful i would say um i never really like realized that i was an anxious person you know until i i started like learning more about myself mm-hmm. um but yeah i've had like little tics like sometimes i have a hard time staying still or like i always said oh my gosh i i'm probably like undiagnosed adhd because it's like i have a hard time focusing and staying still and and just like being like on the weekend i'm always like okay where are we going what to do next rather than just like sitting on my couch and just being so i feel like um i my current mood is more like relaxed more kind of like calm but i feel like i've got into that place by understanding myself more. So I know I keep saying that, but it's because it's that important to to look within and to really identify what you experience so you have better control over it so you can also yeah. experience that like confidence and and inner peace too. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm glad that you're feeling peaceful yeah. and yeah, about the uh, anxiety, yeah, I think I also only like this year and probably um last year later last year I felt that i did feel really anxious sometimes in some situations and i'm like i have never been like like i've never had this sort of feeling of anxiety for like even small things and i was like what's what's what is this 2020 yeah. doing to me like yeah um, like what's going on yeah mm-hmm. but i'm i try to just um let it let that emotion go through me i'm like if i'm feeling anxious it's okay i think about it in the moment like what's making me anxious um instead of just um putting it behind me no, 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 i'm not anxious yeah like ignoring it yeah, ignoring mm-hmm. it i try not to ignore it i try to acknowledge like okay i'm feeling anxious what is the situation that's making me ang- i try to rationalize it okay okay i'm anxious because this is my first day at this new work new job yeah. maybe somebody's going to say something but why would somebody say something if if i'm doing my job correctly and if i was doing something wrong i'll probably apologize like i started rationalizing a lot of things and that makes me like 
peaceful and like calmer yeah and, like calm down it's like giving your mind that that reality check because we could get so lost in like our thoughts of like what what's going to happen what's going to go wrong but yeah yeah it's like bringing bringing the mind back i also feel like meditating has really helped me with with my anxiety it's helped me just kind of like calm down slow down my thoughts and just like be in the present moment so um yeah meditating is my my go to that's amazing um so good to talk to you Vri and thanks for answering those questions so honestly and so openly i really appreciate it um yeah i appreciate you. you i love your podcast and i love being on here again it's so much fun just to talk to you so openly too um so yeah so thank you for for having me you're my regular guest so this is a second podcast and many yeah. more to come <laughs> yeah i love it i love it it's like um, a great day to well yeah to start my day off like this it's really nice yeah um and yeah so we'll wrap it here and i'll post the links down below in the description as i said earlier um where i would also post about the evolve workshop that brie talked about um make sure you check it out and become a part of the tribe if you want to yeah. seek some guidance or some motivation or anything or any feedback that you want and be part of this community. It's free, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, no, it is free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's free and it's private. So that means that it's like a safe, non-judgmental okay. community, which is so so important as well. So you don't have to overthink, like you know, who's gonna, what's this person gonna say, or mm. like, what person's gonna see my comments because it's private and everybody there is focused on their self growth and focused on being the best version of themselves. And when you're the best version of you you're not going to judge other people. You're yeah. not going to like, yeah, like speak poorly to them because it's like, you wouldn't want that in return for yourself. So yeah. yeah. I like, I like that idea so much. Um, I'm sure you guys will really appreciate what Brie has um, had to say today and definitely check her workshop and other work that she's doing. She's also on Instagram and has a private Facebook community that you can join I'll post the links down below and hope you guys enjoyed this chat and I'll see you next yeah. week. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. And also the Evolve workshop is on my Facebook group. So definitely yes. join my private Facebook group. Thanks, Bri. Thank you so much. Thank you.